This is Mark from DataQuest, and today I'm going to show you a solution that actually logs changes to AP, AR, or general ledger entries. So the business case or scenario that we're trying to address is that we need to, anytime the session or logged on user is different than the user who created a particular transaction, uh, if that user <clears throat> yeah, makes any changes to the transaction, we want to capture the before and after values of that change, who made the change, on what date, and at what, what time, all for auditing purposes. So we're using a tool called Extender by Orchid Systems to accomplish this. We have a script in the system that has been built to handle this tracking, and it ends up populating log entries that are in the um, log function of the extender module, which I'll show you in a moment. But there's some setup related to this that's quite interesting. We're able to allow um, the owner of the system, the Sage system, to configure on their own which fields they want to track for auditing purposes. So we can be selective about that. So what we have here are a couple of um, configurable choices, that is, which fields do we want monitored? So in here, we can monitor fields at the AP header level, the AP invoice, optional fields at the AP invoice header level, AR header, AP, AR invoices, AR optional fields, general ledger journal headers, and or general ledger details. So we've set several um, fields up to be monitored here. So we've set uh, the amount of the invoice on the AP side, the invoice number itself, and a couple of optional fields, for example. And that's what we're gonna go over in detail. But what's important to understand here is there are so many different fields on the AP invoice um, data record, uh, it's a, just a simple matter of coming in and setting up another field that you want tracked, and the scripting of the audit solution will pick, pick it up based on it existing in this table and also begin tracking any changes to that field. So <clears throat> the other thing that this solution does is when it comes to general ledger, we may not want to track certain general ledger journal entry changes because things like, for example, allocation instructions. Um, it is typical that maybe those allocations get run based on the allocation instructions you have on accounts, but there's some minor editing uh, before they actually get committed. And those are changes that are permissible and don't need to be audited. So we would end up excluding any general ledger journal entry transactions where the source is gl-rt so we'll experience that in a moment as well we have a journal entry batch that has a je type source code and an rt type source code and you'll see that it captures changes to one of them but not the other so let's take a look what to expect in the end and then we'll actually go through and um, take a look at how this works so here you're seeing the log that accumulates inside the extender module for every change that has happened to the system. So in examining this, we can see that it came from, in fact, the AP view in this case, and batch 28, entry number four, and the ID invoice went from nothing to this value. Or in this situation, it went from this value to this value. So um, every time any one field changes, it's gonna stamp a record here that it can be reported against, or we can use this um, inquiry screen to narrow our search for what has changed. So if I'm interested only in the changes relative to the optional field approved, then I can just filter based on that, and now those are the only changes that I'm seeing. So that's the end result. Let's see this actually work. So if I were to go into the Accounts Payable module and just bring up 
in invoice batch and go into an existing batch. And in this case, I've just kind of been, uh, for example's sake, um, <clears throat> changing to the time of day. So what's important to notice at this stage, if you look at your Sage desktop and the, in the top title bar of the Sage desktop, it tells us who's logged in. So currently user administrator is logged in. And then what's important to notice then looking at the AP invoice entries, this particular entry was created or entered by user one. And I'm currently logged in as user admin. So changes that I make um, should get captured in this scenario because <clears throat> uh, I am a user logged in currently different than the user that created this entry. So I'll change the invoice number and I'll change the approved. So as I go through this and save this, this set of changes, let's try to find a document entered by admin. Okay, so here's one entered by admin and I'll make a change to the ID invoice. We'll just say it's 243 right now and save that. Okay, so what we should expect in the log for extender is that we got two new entries related to batch 28 entry number one, but we got no log entry for entry number two because we are user admin and this entry was created by user admin. So let's take a look. And if we go to the log for 243 um, and 33 seconds, we can see that the optional field approved changed from Olivia Coleman to Judy Dench. And we can see that, and that happened against batch 28 entry number one. Batch 28 entry number one, the ID invoice also changed from 1034 at the end to 243 at the end. So <clears throat> it did not record our changes to the um, second entry, and that was because the user admin is who created that entry. So that's the expected result. Um, so the same exact behavior works for AR, uh, but I'll take a look at GL so that we can understand the difference for um, source entries or source values affecting the logging. So in this case, we notice that the source code is GLJE. The entered by user is user one. I'm currently logged in again as user admin. So if I were to change a GL account, for example, and maybe I'm gonna change um, an, an amount. And bring the GL uh, back into balance. I'm gonna save that set of entries and go to the next journal entry. In this case, we notice that the source code is RT. So any change to this entry, entry number two, should not get recorded because we are <clears throat> um, suppressing changes for types, for source code type RT from being logged. So I'll change an account number just as an example and perhaps an amount. And save that. So we should expect logs from the first entry, but not the second entry. So let's take a look. Okay, so if we look now, um, we have uh, logs from type GL, the last three here, and we're pulling three segments of key values. So the first segment being batch 223, entry number one is the middle segment, and then the final segment is the row in the journal entry that got changed.
So you can see here, um, the first change was the account ID from uh, 4,000 4, to 1021. And here's where our amounts changed uh, when we changed the two different rows for amounts. Okay, so that is a script inside of Orchid Extender that does auditing against AP, AR, and General Ledger. Thank you.